How's it going guys? We are back with another Anthem video and today I wanted to go over a correction, a bit of news that's been populating around and the IGN video that's come out exploring Fort Tarsis. We have lore, we have the vault, we have cosmetics being unlocked via NPCs, we have weekly alliance statuses, clans, trials of Tarsis which essentially are dailies, weeklies and monthly challenges. So without further ado, I think we should just get right in. In my previous video with the Colossus breakdown of skills, I was looking for that perfect video. And then I stumbled across it today, so I would just, I, I thought I'd play homage to those people that are going to be playing Colossus out there, because this is pretty much what it's going to be like to play the Colossus. Okay. Do you want to play us? Okay. Oh, no. Say hello to my little friend! Am I right or am I right? You know I'm right, right? I think I've said right too many times. Maybe? Possibly? Nah. You know I'm right. Right. So everyone, if you find this useful, a like would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome Anthem news. I will be covering The Division 2 as well. They do have a trailer coming out today, so look forward to that. I'll also be covering the live stream and collating all the good bits that came from that and putting that all into a video for you guys. So... If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, it does help the channel grow, it does help the video get more noticed. So on to the actual crux of the video. As you're exploring the world of Anthem, the Fort Tarsus is no different. It is a solo instanced hub where you can go into and do what you need to do in regards to the story. This area here is pretty much your own social space. It isn't an area that you can actually explore with other players. It is a solo hub where you pretty much can talk to NPCs, do dealings, build relationships, break relationships, but there is no Mass Effect type of relationship here. The type of relationships here extend to as far as goodwill and badwill, not the Mass Effect relationships. Just so we get that clear. Here in Fort Tarsus, we get a glimpse from the video as to what it looks like to actually collect the lore. As you can see, you've got the title of what it is, and then a bit of blurb about it, and it pretty much goes into the codex. It does seem that the lore in Anthem will be displayed through codexes, and the actual story itself will expand on the lore. We get a short glimpse of them going through the vault, so you can see how the menu system looks, how each item is listed out. It follows the general theme of what we've been seeing so far, However, I personally would have preferred it to be kind of laid out in view so we could see everything in maybe square blocks with a little, with a preview on the right, but they've opted for this scrolling down system. There is 250 inventory slots, but it does look sleek, clean, and it does the job. Next up, they came across an NPC who basically deals in cosmetic stuff. Instead of just selling it to you like you would expect from Tess Everest, for example, this NPC actually gives you quests to earn cosmetics. These quests could be fetch quests, kill quests, it could be anything. But as of right now, from this one that we're seeing here, he's requesting you to go get some ember, and bring it back. Once you bring him to Ember, he will craft you something and then you gain access to more cosmetic quests. Pretty cool stuff. The fact that they're actually allowing you to go into the game and earn this stuff, not RNG, earn this stuff. This is pretty cool. I like it. This is really, really good. A question I kept getting answer, asked was about clans. Will we have clans? What sort of clans will we have? Well, it seems we have a weekly alliance status and clans will be called alliances in Anthem. So that is one thing to look out for. At the moment, we, you can see that within the clan alliance status, you'll be earning XP or whatever the form of currency is that you'll be earning in order to boost the reputation or the status of your clan up. There's also a pot here on the left that we see for donated currency. So maybe this is going to have the traditional upkeep of a clan. So people have to donate a little bit every time in order to maintain the upkeep. I don't expect it to be much, especially considering it's not a free to play game, so hopefully this will be managed in a good way. Finally, we also get to see a bit of snippets of the Trials of Tarsis, which is essentially your daily, weekly and monthly challenges. Your daily challenges will consist of stuff like go kill 50 enemies or go collect this number of resources. The daily challenges will generally be simple challenges that you do. 
The weekly challenges on the other hand will differ greatly and they will be a bit more harder. The monthly ones will then again accordingly require you to go through a bit more in order to unlock them considering there will only be 12 of these in a year. But either way they have daily, weekly and monthly challenges to keep you busy. And that's pretty much Fort Tarsus in a nutshell. The NPCs are there keeping it alive, you've got relationships to build, not the Mass Effect relationships, get that out of your head. Proper relationships. You've got different NPCs selling your stuff, you've got the clan NPCs and you'll have NPCs to help repair your javelins among other things. So all in all, Fort Tarsus is your hub that you'll be visiting more and more as you play. With that out the way, let's get on to some news because the weekly roundup is here people. So the first question is on build diversity. Brandon Rodifer asks, of course the Colossus is going to be the main tank, but are you able to make the other javelins somewhat of a tank? To which the response was, you can build them all for offense, defense or utility. You can pretty much create your javelin exactly the way you want, be it long range, short range, offensive, defensive, utility, you name it, the oyster is yours. However, each of them will excel at something and push further ahead in that field. So if you're looking for the agility based ninja style of gameplay, the Interceptor will naturally be a lot better than the Colossus will. If you're looking for that Hulkbuster presence, then naturally the Colossus will be better for this. If you're looking for that sniper shot, single shot round with maximum impact, neither the Storm or the Interceptor will provide this. That is Ranger. But if you're looking for an X-Men type feel and flying around controlling the weather elements like Storm does, well, the Storm is for you. But each of them can be tuned individually to excel in other parts. But what they specialize in will be what they specialize in. So this next one is for you guys. I know you've been asking this question a lot. Some of you have actually been put off by it. So here it is, finally in the flesh answered to ease your worries. Ryan Bill asks, I know some concerns that I and others had was the excessive numbers that popped up as you damaged an enemy. Has this been toned down or what can we expect? Ben Irving simply responded, you can change it in the settings. So it's a toggle effect. You can either have it on or off. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, great. The choice is yours, as with everything in this game. So I hope that finally puts this matter to rest and if other people are having an issue with this you can direct them to the video, it is an official source, it is by the developers so you can have them check it out here. A couple of videos ago I did have someone asking this very same question to me to find out if this can act, what will happen to the loot on the ground. So Anfim Espanol asked, will we never know what we loot until we go back to Fort Tarsis or with legendary items will we see it? The response to this was, you will know the rarity, but specifically what it is, not until the end of your expedition. And this was done for two reasons. One, they don't want you switching gear like you do in The Division and like you do in Destiny right now when you pick up a weapon you immediately want to equip it because it's new, it's fancy, so they don't want to stop the flow of play. So that was one of their major reasonings behind this because I'm assuming they've played these other games and have seen the Disruption it can cause, it can actually cause you to wipe if you're not aware that someone else has just randomly stopped and decided to go into their menus to change their gear. Secondly, something that I personally missed from Destiny 1 was the mystery of what I'm going to get. Considering these items are random well, it's nice to be able to take a bunch of engrams to the NPC and see what you got. Obviously they're not engrams here, but you get the idea. In Destiny 1, Master Rahul, as annoying as it was, it was still always a mystery as to what you were going to get and that mystery kept you continuing. Now when you just pick items up immediately and they're decoded, eh, you don't care, you just keep moving on. It's a disappointment after disappointment. At least this way, there is some mystery. Will it get annoying in three months time? Maybe, who knows, but then it can always be changed. So see how it goes. Let me know your thoughts on this. Do you like this? Do you not like it? Do you like the fact that you have to go to an NPC to decode them? Or would you prefer to have it auto decoded in the field? Another question you guys brought up for me was this one from Captain Lunchbox yet again. That's such a cool name. I really like that Captain Lunchbox. Question about loot. If something drops while on a mission or in a stronghold and I miss it due to lighting, 
and fire raining down from my storm javelin. Do I miss out on it or will it be collected for me and can retrieve it in Fort Tarsus? A legitimate question, in Destiny if you miss something it does go straight to your postmaster, whereas in the Division if you miss something it goes straight to waste and you lose it. I'm not sure how it works in Warframe so if we have any Warframe players here do chime in, I'd be interested in how Warframe actually handles this if you don't pick up the loot. Mike Campbell was there to ease worries, you'll get it, no worries, which I'm assuming essentially means, and I know people are going to call me out on this because I said the word assuming, but I'm still sticking with it, assuming it is how I think it is, there's going to be a postmaster of some kind in your Fort Tarsus and any lost items will appear there within a set quantity. This one is actually really 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 cool. Brickwall asks, can you put multiple of the same component on to stack cooldown or resistances? And the answer was yes. So we already know that there's a mod that can reduce your cooldowns while hovering by 50%. And if you can stack that, that's going to be pretty damn amazing. No, having two of them won't mean 100%, but what it will mean is that you can continually stack it until you get to a point where you're happy. And if you're wondering why it's not going to be 100%, let's just say for example, your cooldown is at 100%. By adding a first mod, 50%, it knocks it down to 50%. The next mod that comes along will be 50% of that 50%, so it will drop it down to 25%. So if you then add another one, it will drop down to 12.5% and so forth. But I assume this is how it's going to work if you stack it because they do stack and if it's percentage wise, it's going to stack percentagely. However, if it's the alternative way, if you stack two of them and it's 100% instant cooldown, that's kind of game breaking. So maybe a bit more clarification from Ben or Mike for this, but either solution works great. Haha, <laughs> the next question, tethering. We're back to tethering people. So I was called out in my previous video when I said free play will have no tethering, only missions, and that was presumptuous of me. Well, here you have it. Michael Gamble says missions have tethering, fairly forgiving, to make sure that folks stick together to goals of the mission. Free play has no tethering. And that pretty much ends that theory of it not being free roam. Free roam, no tethering. Confirmed. And the final question of the day by Slayride. Does enemy gun accuracy decrease based on distance? Should I keep my storm really far up away when up in the sky? Now we know that this game has RPG elements, so it's no surprise that weapons and gear have effective ranges so distance will matter at all time. So you need to make sure you're at the sweet spot to not get damage drop. And that's pretty much the video. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been informative. It's given you a bit more insight. We have got answers to a number of questions here. We've got glimpses of the weeklies, dailies and monthly challenges. We've got insights into a bit more of the clan. We've seen the vault, how the codex law works. So all in all, I hope this video has had something for everyone and has been useful to you all. Leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts, let me know how you feel about everything, let me know if you have any questions, I do read through them, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Remain Legend. Shout out to my